Lisa, great to see you back in the studio again. It's been absolutely ages. We had a couple of, uh, well, uh, weather events that got in our way on filming and working in the studio, actually. Um, so our wonderful videographer uh, went to uh, Texas to help with uh, the Harvey remediation. So he was gone doing that when Irma decided to um, ride up the spine of Florida. And uh, so he had to fly back and help me uh, finish packing and we left and we had a wonderful little kind of, uh, let's see, we called it uh, a evacuation vacation. It was totally unplanned, but uh, spur of the moment. So we've been busy and um, so today we're so excited to be back here in the studio filming and sharing with you some of my uh, favorite mixed media techniques. It's actually um, part three in a series of my favorite mixed media backgrounds. And today we're going to talk about just about texture and about building texture and taking your time building it. So we're going to talk about um, collage and decollage. We're going to talk about using um, handmade papers in your work. Make sure that this is right side up so you can see it. And then we're also going to talk about stencils and stenciling. And, and I haven't I haven't shared um, anything really about stenciling and stencils with you, so I thought we would talk about that today too because I use modeling paste a lot. So I think you're going to enjoy it, so stick around. We'll see you in a few. We're going to start with collage and decollage, and I wanted to share it with you to today so I could show you the buildup of texture that you can get with it. And this probably has about 12 layers and I let it dry and then went back and collaged it and then I ripped it off. So you can see um, underneath uh, the, the layers on top of each other and what's underneath. And uh, you can use all different kinds of media to do this. What I chose to use for this was a uh, magazine called The Magazine from Santa Fe. And, and it is a um, a wonderful full color kind of newsprint uh, magazine and I rip it up so that you're not seeing any of the images you as you see this is what it looks like when I when I finished it but it has a wonderful texture that newsprint and then um, I followed it up with some book pages so you can use all different kinds of things to collage and decollage and it builds a, a wonderful thick layer which is really yummy and delicious I hope you can see that um, and so I've taken a liberty of, of and I want to show you some, some tricks and techniques for it. So I've taken a liberty of, of, of working on another mixed media paper and I'm working strictly on mixed media paper today just to give you demonstrations and show you how to do these. And so this one is, has uh, one layer and you can see the paper coming through. You can see how easy I can bend it. So you can tell that there's not much on there. This one with about 12 layers, that's about as far as I can bend it. So it, it has a wonderful um, thick texture. I wish you could feel it because it, it feels really great. And I'm going to finish this off using just a little bit of, uh, of uh, titanium white. You could use a zinc white too. A zinc white would be great because it, it's, you know, it, it doesn't have as much coverage but I really want to edit uh, what I've done. I want to be able to see that there are some layers underneath there, but I, I don't really, I, want, I don't want to see everything, right? I want to edit out some of that stuff. So this is, uh, this is how I would finish this off, and I'm going to show you how I created it in just a second. So now you can see the difference of it. Okay, so we'll get started on this and I'll get my gloves on because I'm working with uh, gel matte medium which is made by Golden and so you want to have really limited contact with your skin with, uh, with this. So I used this and I ripped it into pieces and worked it. Now when you do this decollage and collage technique you want to make sure that you're not using super large pieces because if you do, you're going to rip back and you'll end up pulling, pulling it completely off, especially if you're doing wet on wet technique, which is what we're going to be doing. 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put my medium on. And we're going to, I want to get some pink on here so that you can actually see some of the color come through. And uh, what I usually do is work on several different things at one time in the studio so that I can glue things down, let them dry, and then come back and work on other things rather than having to use a blow dryer. But if you're totally impatient, I get it. Using a blow dryer would be a great thing to do. Put white there. And we're going to put some more here. Okay. Make sure we got a really good contact. Now, you want it to, to let it dry just enough so that you're going to be pulling some of the cellulose and, and some of the, the ink off of it and just keep building up layers. But as you get, as, it, as you go along, you're gonna to want to leave more and more of the paper. So you want to leave it on for longer periods of time. So that's why it's really imperative that you use smaller pieces. Otherwise, you're going to have a mess when you try to try to lift it off. And I would use, um, you know, making these. You can make a lot of these. It, it's just really fun, and, and it will really release the. Um, if you have any artist blocks or you feel like you've lost your muse, you know, you're just kind of struggling. These are really fun to just create and make because it's a real meditative process. So, um, in fact, all of these are. So I, I, these are my go-to things to just make a bunch of them and then you can use them for different things. This would be awesome to use in your art journals um, to put a, uh, an image on top of it or to stitch something to it. So it, they're really fun. It's really fun to use, but it's also a technique that you can use in the journal on both pages. And um, I'll show you that in just a second. So now I'm going to pull this back. So I can see the pink starting to come through. And you're just going to keep, you know, repeating these over and over again until you get it completely covered. Like I said, you don't want it all to show up. You want some of it to show. And make sure that you go over the page so that you have something to pull back. And absolutely, these gloves are absolutely the worst gloves I've ever used and I've got to get a better pair of latex gloves. I've been complaining about these all morning, but <laughs> so. Anyway, there we go. So I love that pink color coming through. It's pretty fun. And as it is in art, sometimes it doesn't always cooperate as much as you would like. See, you can see some of it pulling off there. There we go. Okay, I love that. That came out great. Okay, so you're going to keep just keep doing that until you get everything filled in and then paint it off. Sand it if you want to, sand the layer, and if you want to leave it really rough, then leave it really rough. So I know you're always looking for examples of where I would use things. And so this technique I actually use for my journal pages for this month. You're seeing it for the first time. And it is about the hurricane, about Irma. And um, I hope you um, can see the texture. So it's exactly what I did on both pages. It took me a long time to do it, but um, I really love the way it turned out. And um, the uh, center uh, and all of the outside and inside edges are all completely collage and decollage. So, so I've talked about using handmade papers in, in your work um, and uh, these delicate, really fluffy things. And you see them in the stores and you think, oh my gosh, I love that, but what would I do with it? Um, I think of these papers as um, kind of like going to the market and buying a couple of packages of flowers. You don't just open it up and put the flowers in a vase. You cut them down and you arrange them together so that they look beautiful. 
These papers are the same thing. You're going to rip them up and you're going to use them in your work and glue them down. And I know I've showed you a little bit about that, but I wanted to share with you the technique about building up the layers. So I used a small project, and this is a toile um, tissue paper piece at, in the center. And the reason I used it, it's a little castle, uh, was to kind of show you the depth that you can build up different layers. I probably wouldn't use this, in, in fact, the very first project that I worked up for you was just strictly the paper building layers and tissue. And it just looked like a whole lot of nothing. So <laughs> I've decided to go ahead and give you some kind of an image in the middle. And that, so, so that you can get an idea of the depth and, and the flatness, and then the layers get built up. These are probably three or four layers here. So, so you can see the difference. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how I did that today. And we're gonna get started right now. Well, I'm putting on my dreaded gloves because I'm going to get started on this. And so to give you a background, what I did was I used uh, just wrapping paper underneath and a book page uh, to begin with. And so that's what I've done here. I did the wrapping paper and the book page. Sometimes the wrapping paper is super shiny. And when that happens, you want to give it a nice little sand to kind of take off that shine. Otherwise, you won't be able to use it for, uh, for our purpose because we, we want to paint it just slightly. And I'm just going to use a Titan Buff. And this one I used a dark um, brown, what was it, a raw umber, I think. Yeah. Um, I used a tiny coat of it just to give more of a depth so you could see the white. But you're going to be able to see how the layers go on. So I'm just going to. Um, Kind of marry the layers with a little bit of Titan Buff, and of course I picked the brand new tube of Titan Buff. So, and for some reason it seems to be stuck there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, this is one of my favorite techniques. Is this universal? You're kind of. Uh, what I want to call it. You're unifying your your piece by covering with the background piece. If this was blue paper and a blue book page, I would use blue. So uh, this is just one of my favorite ways of bringing it all together. And and you're editing too. You're you're getting rid of some of the word because it isn't it isn't all about the word. Although the words are important because they're obviously uh, they have an energy of their own too. So you want to keep that. Uh, the, the word on the page, which helps tell the story that you're creating. So this is just tissue paper, toile tissue paper. You could use any kind of image uh, that you want. And you know, you want to make sure that this is fairly dry before you put it down, otherwise your paint is going to, um, to color the tissue paper. And that's not the point, right? You want to be able to see the words underneath. So. And don't worry if you get a few wrinkles in it because it just adds to the texture and that's what you're creating is the texture. Okay, now I created a grounding by using this type of tissue with the spots kind of giving it a ground as if as if it actually is ground. You're grounding it, it's the, uh, the foreground of your of your piece. And I think I'll put some more over here on this side. Don't like that piece. <clears throat> and you don't have to worry about working off the page because you're just going to take your sanding, um, your sanding sponge and go over it anyway. And then to create the sky, I use this this wonderful ethereal tissue uh, paper, rice paper, with the threads in it above the heads and then thicker paper down here at the bottom to create more of a ground. So 
so you can see it's working to kind of create this effect and building up the layers. You can still see the writing underneath, which is what you want. You want to be able to see that in different areas. So it, it creates this wonderful effect that you can, you can read sort of what's going on. And, and that's just so interesting. It's, it's like, what is it saying? It's so mysterious. It tells its own little story and it just creates this wonderful sense of, of uh, intrigue. And that's what you want to create in your work. You want people to be fascinated and to wonder what's the real story about this piece? What's going on here? Okay, so that gives you an idea. Now you just keep building layers up over and over until you feel comfortable with it. And you can, you can see that you can keep going on and on with this in your work. So, I like it. I like the way it's coming out. So there you have it, using handmade papers. Rip them up, shred them, and put them on your work. So the last technique I wanted to share with you is stenciling. And I'm not big on spraying stencils. I think it looks great, but I really love texture. And so uh, I, I worked to create some texture for you and worked in the, around the image of circles, which I absolutely love using in my work. And uh, so I, uh, I thought I would talk to you about the difference um, between using different uh, kinds of stencils um, and also using, using them in different ways. Um, I use um, stencils that are, um, I call them junk stencils, um, basically templates, old templates, and uh, this is from an old kids project, uh, cards, you know, a card from the store. Uh, well, it, stencils are everywhere, so I, I, I like buy, I, I like using stencils that aren't store bought, that are, that are unique and different, that not everyone would, you know, would look for. So this one is one of my favorites. It, it used to have lace um, carded around it, and uh, it, it's absolutely wonderful when you're using modeling paste. So that's what we're going to be using today. That's what I like to use, and I wanted to share with you a couple of techniques for, for using uh, modeling paste uh, with uh, stencils. And so the interesting thing about modeling paste, some people know this, some people don't, is you can make it any color you want to. In fact, I was in the store the other day and I noticed that there's a, a new uh, brand um, that came out and I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, it had, um, you know, modeling paste comes in this kind of clay-like color. It's kind of a light white grayish color. This way, this way, this way. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so you can actually mix paint with it. And so what I noticed was they had all these little tubes of modeling paste that were mixed with paint. Um, but isn't that kind of restrictive? I mean, there's only so many of those you know, paint colors. You can make it any paint color that you want. So you can do it two ways. You can use it plain and you can also um, use it by mixing the paint with it and create a different color. So I'm going to show you both of those ways and uh, working with different um, with different sizes. So, and then what I did was I just cut it out so that I could use these cutouts in other things. I'm trying to keep this in the frame. I'm so bad about that. I'm getting better at it actually, but uh, so anyway, so we're going to play with that today. So I'm going to show you how to do that. There are also two ways you can use your stencils. Obviously, you can um, lay it down absolutely perfectly and, spun, and uh, use your palette knife to bring it over. Or you can um, spread the, the molding paste out and then smush this down. That's a technical art term, smush, uh, into it. So we're going to do both of those. And I've already painted this dark brown so you get an idea of it. So um, we're going to um, do it this way first, which I don't know, it feels really cool when you do this and if you like doing it. So it comes out kind of cool like that. And then the other way is to um, lay it down. And 
and let me go smoosh it into it. And then when you take it off, it comes up with a real similar texture, but it kind of moves and smooshes. That's another technical art term. <laughs> and then using the colored piece that you made, um, let's do it this way. Just spread it out and then pull it up. Okay, now the cool thing about this is that you can go over it when it dries, when it's just the plain molding paste. Can you see that? When it's just plain, you can go over it with Stabilo plain molding paste. I just can't get it right, I'm sorry. <laughs> like that? <laughs> like that. Anyway, so once it's dry and it's just the natural molding paste, you can go over it with uh, Stabilos, which are these wonderful things. Uh, this set, they're water soluble. You can go over them with those. Um, or you can do pa pastels, you can do watercolors, you can do all kinds of things. So you can let it dry and then you can color it whatever color you want to. Or you can think ahead and create the color. Uh, and then um, once it's dry, of course, then you can go back and create a larger circle in the area, which is the way I did this, just like that. Um, so there, that gives you some, some, uh, some thoughts about using... Um, modeling paste in your work and creating uh, wonderful effects. And, and I, have, I have one in my journal to show you too, which was last month's that are the stars. I'm trying to get it down here. Okay. And so I hope you can see the texture of the stars up there or right here, right there. Okay, so, and then modeling paste on the paper. So we're at chow for now, and uh, so I'm getting my chocolate ready because I deserve to eat chocolate now that I've been such a good girl and finished my video. So, um, just want to thank you for stopping by. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Thank you for uh, all of your comments. I love hearing from you. I try to answer every single one, and I will as long as I possibly can. And um, I just so appreciate you coming by and seeing our channel. So, ciao, ciao.